Hello, everyone. I'm pleased to have with me today Dr. Frederick W. Kagan. I reached out to some of my contacts uh, who have some intellectual credibility and some political expertise to find out who could be contacted to provide an update for everyone, me included, on the unfolding situation in Russia and Ukraine. And Dr. Frederick Kagan, his name popped up instantly. So I'll give you a bit of a bio and then we'll get right to the issue, what's happening in the Ukraine. Dr. Frederick W. Kagan <clears throat> is author of the 2007 report, Choosing Victory, a plan for success in Iraq. He's one of the intellectual architects of the surge strategy in Iraq. He's the director of the American Enterprise Institute's Critical Threats Project and a former professor of military history at the US Military Academy at West Point. His books range from Lessons for a Long War, American Enterprise Institute Press 2010, co-authored with Thomas Donnelly, to The End of the Old Order, Napoleon in Europe, 1805, 1801 to 1805, DeCapo Press 2006. He worked as an assistant professor of military history at West Point from 95 to 2001, and as an associate professor of military history from 2001 to 2005. Dr. Kagan holds a PhD in Russian and Soviet military history from Yale. So welcome. Thanks for agreeing to talk to me today. I very much appreciate it. I'm looking forward to this insofar as you can look forward to a discussion about such topics. And so we'll get right to the heart of the matter, I guess, uh, in the most pointed manner possible. Maybe you could give us some sense of of what's happening right now, and then we'll move to why and what we should do about it. And But as far as you're concerned, how should we be understanding the events that are unfolding in Ukraine? So um, several days ago, I've, I confess I've lost all track of, of time, um, but several days ago, uh, Vladimir, Russian President Vladimir Putin launched an unprovoked and unjustified and illegal attack on Ukraine uh, for the purpose of conquering it. Um, he has conducted air and missile strikes against multiple multiple targets across the entire country, and he has uh, launched a ground invasion along uh, multiple axes. His objective is very clearly to take control of the Ukrainian government in Kyiv, uh, but also to take control of a lot of other territory in Ukraine. He obviously aims at a minimum to replace the uh, pro-Western government headed by uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, uh, Ukraine's current president, and install some kind of governance structure uh, that will bring Ukraine, um, as he sees it, back into the Russian fold. Uh, it's not at all obvious to me or anyone really what uh, kind of governance structure Putin has in mind at this point, uh, but it is very clear that he intends to do this at the point, at the, at the muzzle of the tank, um, and that he is willing to kill quite a lot of people and do quite a lot of damage in Ukraine uh, in order to uh, regain control of the country. And that is, that is, that is what is going on uh, in short. It's part of a larger effort that Putin is engaged in to reconstitute the, the Soviet Union in some way, or possibly the Tsarist Empire in some way. Um, the, the geographies of the Soviet Union and the Tsarist Empire had interesting overlaps and underlaps. And it's important to keep in mind that Putin refers to both when he's talking about what his, uh, what his aims are. Um, and then just, you know, the last larger thing to zoom out from all of that, uh, he's been very explicit about his intention to destroy the NATO alliance, uh, to break the ties between the United States and Europe, uh, to change the world order fundamentally and to return the United States to what he regards as its proper sphere, which is uh, a Western hemispheric power. 